Hey guys, do you know who the differential dinosaur here? Talking to you about solving differential equations, challenge problems. Now here's a question. Why can't you hear a pterodactyl use the bathroom? Because the P is silent. <laughs> First thing we're talking about is a differential equation in X and Y. That would be an equation that involves X, Y, and the derivatives of Y. So down here we have some examples of differential equations, which are just derivatives of functions set equal to some expression in terms of X and Y. Now, typically we've been dealing with differential equations just in terms of X, but today we're going to deal with differential equations with both X and Y in them. Second thing we're talking about is a general solution that would be the family of all antiderivatives of a given differential equation written as a function plus c. So we hopefully know this now. If we were to solve a differential equation by separating the variables, preparing both sides for integration, integrating both sides, that would give you the general solution where you just write plus c when you take the antiderivative of your differential equation. And the reason you write plus c is because you are not given any initial condition where you're allowed to solve for c. But let's say you are given some initial condition and you are allowed to solve for c. That will then be the particular solution, which is the antiderivative of a given differential equation where an initial condition is given, allowing you to solve for c. So just remember, general solution, no initial condition, plus c. Particular solution, initial condition, solve for c. Now let's review how to solve a differential equation. So remember, the first thing you have to do in order to get any points on the AP test is to separate the variables. Make sure all the X's are on one side, make sure all the Y's are on the other side, make sure all the T's are on one side, make sure all the W's are on the other side. Make sure the variables are separated before you then move on to step two, which is to prepare both sides for integration. Make sure that if you're integrating a function with multiple terms, you integrate each term separately. Make sure that if you're multiplying some function multiplied by a constant, you take that constant and move it out front of the integral side. You then integrate both sides and add C. This will then give you your general solution. Last but not least, always check for an initial condition. If one is provided, you can then solve for that C and get your particular solution. Now, something to note here, there's going to be times where you have an X and a Y that are separated with a plus or minus addition or subtraction. When this occurs, you won't successfully be able to separate the variables. And this is where slope fields come in, because if we can't separate the variables, we can't integrate. We can't solve the differential equation. So if we want to see what that particular solution looks like, that's when we use a slope field. What do you call a dinosaur who's a noisy sleeper? A Brontosaurus! <laughs> Now, example one says separate the variables of the given differential equations. So in this example, we aren't even tasked with solving the differential equation. We just need to separate the variables. So we need to make sure all the X's get to one side, all the Y's get to the other side. So in order to separate the variables here, we need to make sure this DX gets to the other side of this equation. So we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by DX. That way over here, the DX's cancel each other out. And on this side, we have the quantity X plus one over the quantity two minus Y times DX. Now we need to make sure that the Y's all get to the other side of the equation. So we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by 2 minus y. When we do that over here, the 2 minus y's cancel each other out. And on this side, we just have the quantity 2 minus y dy. Now we see that we have all the y's to one side, all the x's to the other side. So we have successfully separated our variables. Part B, doing the same thing, just separating the variables. So we have dy dx is equal to 3x squared y over 5. So what we need to do first in separating the variables is anytime you have some constant in the numerator and denominator like this, and it's all multiplication, we can actually just take that 3 fifths and move it out front. Now, this makes it a little easier to see how we're going to separate the variables. The first thing you're going to do is move this denominator right here. So we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by dx. When we do that over here, the dx's cancel each other out. And on this side, we just get 3 fifths x squared y dx. Now, we have all the x's on one side of the equation we need the y's to go to the other side so how do we get this y over here we divide both sides by y or multiply both sides by one over y over here the y's cancel each other out and on this side you just have one over y times dy you could rewrite that as dy over y you get the same thing now one thing i want you to note is that oftentimes your function will have some constant multiplied to it it technically doesn't matter what side that constant goes on when you're separating your variables because when you integrate either side the constant's going to jump out front but you typically put it on whatever side you're independent variable is so wherever dx is or dt that's where you're going to put your constant why did the t-rex skeleton at the museum get so scared because she didn't have any guts <laughs>
Okay, doing the same thing. We have a differential equation. We want to separate our variables. Now notice, we have a function with multiple terms here. So what do we do when that occurs? Well, each of these terms has an x. So what we can do is we can actually factor out an x from each of those terms. So we end up getting x times the quantity, y plus 3. Now this is going to make it much easier to separate our variables. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move this dx to the other side. We multiply both sides of the equation by dx. The dx's cancel out over here. And now we have all the x's on one side of our equation. But we need to get the y's to the other side. So how do we get y? y plus 3 to the other side, we divide both sides by y plus 3, or multiply both sides by 1 over y plus 3. Over here, the y plus 3s cancel each other out, and on this side, we just have 1 over y plus 3 dy, or you could write that as dy over y plus 3. Part B, doing the same thing. We need to get all the x's to one side, all the y's to the other side. So how do we separate our variables here? Well, first, we're going to move that dx. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by dx. Over here, the dx's cancel each other out. And over here, we just have 3 over the product x times y times dx. Now we need to get the y's to the other side. So how do we get this y over here? Well, since this y is in the denominator, what I can do is just multiply both sides of the equation by y. Over here, the y's are now going to cancel each other out. And on this side, we just have y dy and we have successfully separated our variables. Now let's talk about a special case. So we are again separating the variables. So to separate the variables here, we need to get this dx to the other side of the equation. So we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by dx. These over here cancel each other out. And on this side, we just have the quantity x plus y times dx. Now I want you to notice something. There's no algebraic way that I can get this y to the other side without there also being an x over here. I could try to divide both sides by x plus y, the quantity, and then there would still be an x over here. And there's no way I could get rid of it. I could distribute the dx to each of these terms and then subtract y dx from both sides, but there would still be a dx over here. There's no way that I could successfully get all the y's on one side and all the x's on the other side. When that occurs, you just say variables cannot be separated, and you're done. Now, example two says find the general solution to the given differential equation. We're going to do the full process now. We're going to solve this differential equation. So the first step in solving a differential equation is to separate the variables. It's the most important step. If you don't do this step, you can't get any points on the AP test. So we need to separate our variables. We need to make sure all the x's get to one side, all the y's get to the other side. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by dx so that the dx's cancel each other out over here. And on this side, we have 3x over y times dx. So how do I get that y to the other side of the equation? Well, since the y is in the denominator here, I'm just going to multiply both sides of the equation by y. That way over here, these y's now cancel each other out, and I just have y dy is equal to 3x dx. Now that I've successfully separated the variables, I can move on to the next step, which is to prepare both sides for integration. So I'm going to integrate both sides of this equation. Over here, I have a constant multiplied to my function, so I'm going to move that constant 3 out front of my integral sign. I am now ready to integrate both sides. So I'm going to integrate both sides of this equation. Over here, the integral of y dy is going to be y squared over 2 plus c, and then on this side, I integrate x dx and I get x squared over 2 plus c. Now, typically, you're not going to write a constant of integration on both sides of your equation. You're just going to put it on the side wherever the independent variable is, because if you subtract a constant to the other side, a constant minus a constant is still going to be a constant. Now, we have successfully integrated, so usually what we would do here is we would just solve for y. But if we were to solve for y here, we'd multiply both sides by 2, and then we'd have to square root both sides and get y is equal to plus or minus some big radical. So rather than do that, notice here we have a y squared and an x squared. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this so these both have constants multiplied to the front of them where it's going to be one half y squared and three halves x squared and I'm going to subtract that three halves x squared to the other side of the equation. Now why put it in this form rather than y is equal to something? Because this is the form of a hyperbola so we want to just leave it in this form that's fine. Now we ask ourselves was there any initial condition given at the beginning of the problem? No. So we're just going to leave our answer as the general solution with a c in it. What kind of dinosaur can dunk on LeBron? A Triceratops! <laughs> Okay, doing the same thing. We want to find the general solution of this given differential equation. The first step in solving a differential equation is separating the variables. You must do this in order to get any points on the AP test. So how do we separate our variables here? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by 1 over x squared plus 4, or divide both sides by x squared plus 4. The reason is because we want to get all the x's to one side of the equation. So we're going to move that over here. Now, when we do this, these x squared plus 4s cancel each other out. And on this side, we just have x times y over the quantity x squared 
squared plus 4. Now, we have some of the x's over here, but we still need that dx to get over here. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by dx. Now the dx's over here cancel each other out, and we have all the x's on one side of our equation. Now what we need to do is get this y over here. So how do we get this y over to the other side of the equation? Well, we could divide both sides by y or multiply both sides by 1 over y. Over here, the y's will then cancel each other out. And on this side, you have dy over y or just 1 over y dy, however you want to write it. Now, since we have successfully separated the variables, we can move on to step two, which is to prepare both sides for integration. So we're going to integrate both sides. Now, when we integrate over here, that's easy. That's just going to be ln of the absolute value of y plus c. On this side, we're integrating a function being divided by another function. And when that occurs, remember, you're probably going to have to use u substitution. So we need to set u equal to whichever function. If I were to take the derivative of it, it would give me the other function. So that would be this x squared plus 4. We need to set u equal to that. That way, when I take the derivative of this, it's going to give me 2x dx. Now we look at the problem. There's an x and there's a dx, but there is no 2. So that 2 needs to go to the other side of this equation right here. And now we could substitute u in for x squared plus 4, and we could substitute that 1 half du in for the x and the dx. So we are almost ready to integrate. We just need to prepare a little bit more. We got this constant here that I can move out front of my integral. Now we're ready. So we're going to integrate both sides of this equation. When we integrate over here, we said it's going to be ln of the absolute value of y plus c. When we integrate over here, it's going to be ln of the absolute value of u plus c. And again, we don't need to write c on both sides of the equation. We're just going to write it with our independent variable because if you subtract a constant to the other side, a constant minus a constant is still going to be a constant. Now, because this isn't a definite integral, we're just trying to find the general solution up here. We need our answer to be in terms of x and y. So we need to substitute back in whatever we set u equal to, which was x squared plus 4. Let's clean this up. I'm going to take this one half. And by the power properties of logs, anytime you have a number or a constant multiplied out front of a log, you can bring it so that it's the exponent of whatever you're taking the log of. So now this is technically ln of the square root of x squared plus 4 plus c. Now we need to solve for y. To get rid of the ln, we're going to take the e of both sides. Probably not called taking the e of both sides, but you get what we're doing. We're taking the e of both sides because e to the ln, those two things are going to cancel each other out. That's why we're doing it. Over here, you would think that the e and the ln would just cancel out right away. However, in our exponent, we have multiple terms, meaning you can't just cancel out this e to the ln. What's going to happen with this over here? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to actually have to use one of our properties of exponents, which says when you multiply like bases, you add together the exponents. You keep the same base and add together the exponents. So here, we're just going to go the other way. Since we have a base with an exponent that has two things being added together, we could actually rewrite this as e to the ln of the square root of x squared plus 4 times e to the c. Because when you multiply like bases, you keep the same base and add together the exponents. We just went the other direction. Now, why did we do that? Because the e and the ln are going to cancel each other out, and we just get the square root of x squared plus 4. You don't have to put absolute value bars because it's a square root. It automatically has to be positive. This e to the c, we can multiply it to the front. We don't want to have it confused with being under the radical, so that's why we bring it out here. Now, over here, we have absolute value of y. How do we get rid of the absolute value bars? Well, if you want to get rid of the absolute value bars on one side of the equation, on the other side, you just need to put a plus or minus, which is what we do. Now, the question is, what is plus or minus e to the c? Well, e is just a constant. It's 2.71, da, 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 da. And that's being raised to a constant. So what is a constant being raised to a constant? It's still just a constant. So anytime you have e to the c power, you're going to rewrite that just as capital C, just one big constant. And what is plus or minus a constant? It's still just a constant. We don't know whether it's positive or negative. So this plus or minus e to the c, we're just going to rewrite that all as c because a constant could be positive or negative and e to a constant is just a constant to a constant. That's why this whole thing up here has been consumed by this c. Now we have our general solution to this differential equation. So the question is, were we given an initial condition? No, we were not, meaning the general solution is our answer. Now, example three says find the equation of the curve that passes through the point 1 comma 3 and has the slope of y over x squared at any point x comma y. So believe it or not, this question is giving you a differential equation because it's saying that the curve has a slope of y over x squared at any point x comma y, meaning dy dx is equal to y over x squared. And we want to find the equation of that curve that passes through this given point. So we are given this differential equation dy dx is equal to y over x squared and 
and we are given an initial condition this time. It passes through the point 1, 3. So we are going to solve this differential equation. Then we're going to use this initial condition to find C. So let's do it. How do we solve a differential equation? Well, the first step is to separate your variables. So we need to make sure all the x's get to one side, all the y's get to the other. So we're going to multiply both sides by dx first. That way the dx's over here cancel each other out. And now we have all the x's on the right side of the equation. But now we need to get the y's to the other side. So how do we get this y over here? Well, since y is in the numerator, we need to divide both sides by y or multiply both sides by 1 over y. Now the y's over here are going to cancel each other out. And we have 1 over y dy is equal to 1 over x squared dx. So all the y's are on one side, all the x's are on the other side. Now we can prepare both sides for integration. So we're going to integrate both sides. It looks like they're both ready to go. But this one, instead of having 1 over x squared, we're going to rewrite that as x to the negative second power. That makes it much easier to integrate because then we can just use the general power rule. Why don't we do that over here? Because the integral of 1 over y is going to be ln of the absolute value of y plus c. On this side, we use the general power rule. That's how we get x to the negative second plus 1 over negative 2 plus 1 plus c. Again, we only put c on one side of the equation because technically a constant minus constant is still just a constant. Now we simplify this and this becomes x to the negative 1 over negative 1, which we can rewrite as negative 1 over x plus c. Now we don't want to leave our answer as ln of the absolute value of y. We want to solve for y. So how do we get rid of this ln? Well, remember, we take the e of both sides. And when we do that over here, the e and the ln are going to cancel each other out. We just get absolute value of y. On this side, in our exponent, we have multiple terms. And when this happens, you're going to write this as e to the first term times e to the second term. Because we know if we multiply like bases, we just add together the exponents. So we're just going the opposite direction. Now we're just going to take this e to the c and move it in front over here because we know what's about to happen. We're going to drop the absolute value over here and put plus or minus on the other side. And we now know that plus or minus e to the c is just going to all be c. It's going to be a constant because a constant raised to a constant that is positive or negative is still just going to be some constant. So we have found the general solution to this differential equation. But we were provided an initial condition, 1 comma 3, when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 3. So we're going to take that, plug it in to this general solution. 1 is going to go in for x, 3 is going to go in for y. We then simplify, solve for c, and we end up getting, when we multiply both sides by e, that c is equal to 3e. So now what I'm going to do to get my particular solution is I'm going to take this c value that I found, and I'm going to plug it in to my general solution for c. So it's just going to be 3 times e to the first times e to the negative 1 over x. We said when we multiply like bases, we add the exponents. So e to the first times e to the negative 1 over x, we add the 1 and the negative 1 over x, we get e to the negative 1 over x plus 1. Now, I wouldn't mind if you boxed your answer right here, called it a day. But if you want to make this look a little nicer, you could change this 1 so that it has a common denominator with this 1 over x, make it x over x. And when you add these together, you just get x minus 1 over x. That is your new exponent of this e. And now we have the particular solution of this differential equation that passes through this given point. Now, example four says the rate of change of the number of coyotes, n of t, in a population is directly proportional to 650 minus n of t, where t is the time in years. When t is equal to zero, the population is 300. When t is equal to two, the population has increased to 500. Find the population when t is equal to three. So this is a very common type of AP question. Let me show you how this works. We'll break it down. It says the rate of change. So we're automatically thinking some differential equation. The rate of change of the number of coyotes, n of t. So we automatically know that our independent variable is t, our dependent variable is going to be n. So if we want to write our differential equation, it would be dn dt is equal to, and now let's figure out what it's equal to, in a population is directly proportional to. So anytime you see directly proportional to, what you're going to do is you're going to take k, some constant, and then multiply it to whatever comes next. So in this case, it says directly proportional to 650 minus n of t, meaning our differential equation here is going to be dn dt is equal to k times 650 minus n of t, where dn dt is our rate of change. K is what we include when it says is directly proportional to, and then this is what it's directly proportional to, our given function. Now, we are also given two initial conditions. When time t equals 0, the population is 300. We write that as 0, 300. And then when time t equals 2, the population has increased to 500. So we write that as 2, 500. Now, the only question is, what does it want us to find? It wants us to find the population when t equals 3, meaning we need to solve this differential equation so that we have a function where n is the 
number of coyotes and t is our independent variable so we can plug in three for t and then solve for n the number of coyotes so in order to solve a differential equation you need to go through our steps the first step and most important step is to separate the variables make sure all the n's get to one side all the t's get to the other side so we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by dt that way over here the dt's cancel each other out we now have all the t's on one side of the equation we need to make sure all the n's now get to the other side so we're going to divide both sides by 650 minus n or multiply both sides by one over 650 minus n these are going to cancel each other out now we have all the t's on one side all the n's on the other side but you think what about that k remember k is just a constant so this is just a number we don't have to worry about that till the end so we have successfully separated our variables next we need to prepare both sides for integration so we're going to integrate both sides over here this k is just a constant so to prepare this side for integration i just move that k out front of my integral sign and now i'm just going to integrate dt that's easy but what about over here i have 1 over 650 minus n well i have a function in my denominator here anytime you're trying to integrate something where it's 1 over a linear function in our denominator down here we need to make sure that we use u substitution we're going to set u equal to whatever's in the denominator right here so we're going to set u equal to 650 minus n i then need to find du so i'm going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to n so over here i get du dn on this side i get 0 minus 1 i then multiply both sides by dn i get negative 1 dn on this side now we look up here there's no negative 1 it's just positive 1 dn so i'm going to divide both sides by negative 1 or multiply both sides by negative 1 i get negative 1 du is equal to dn so now i can rewrite this integral in terms of u and du i'm going to substitute u in for the 650 minus n i'm going to substitute negative 1 du in for the dn i now can prepare this side for integration by taking that negative 1 moving it out front and i'm ready to roll so i integrate both sides and add c over here the integral of 1 over u du is going to be ln of the absolute value of u plus c distribute that negative you get negative ln of the absolute value u minus c on this side the integral of dt is going to be t plus c distribute that k you get kt plus k times our constant c is just going to be a constant times a constant still a constant we then take that negative c over here add it to the other side a constant plus a constant still just a constant so now we have this equation right here but the whole goal of this is to get an equation in terms of n and t so we need to make sure we plug back in whatever we set u equal to that was 650 minus n so that's going to go in for u here we now solve for n so how do we get n by itself well the first step is to get rid of this little negative here so i'm going to divide both sides by negative one or multiply both sides by negative one i now get rid of this ln by taking the e of both sides now we do that because e to the ln these two things are going to cancel each other out on this side we have e to the negative k t minus c we have e to a binomial so we said anytime this occurs what you're going to do is you're going to take e to the first term times e to the second term because when you're multiplying like bases you add together these exponents so this would be equivalent to this up here my next step in solving for n would be to drop these absolute value meaning i have to put plus or minus on the other side and now we already know what to do here plus or minus e to the negative c still a constant just like plus or minus e to the c was so we just rewrite this as capital c it's just a constant now we can solve for n by subtracting 650 from both sides dividing both sides by negative one or multiplying both sides by negative one we get n is equal to 650 minus c times e to the negative kt so this is our general solution to this differential equation but notice here we have a c and a k we have two constants that we need to find in order to solve this question so how are we going to find both of those constants well that's what these two initial conditions are for we are going to use those initial conditions to find each of these constants so let's use this first one 0 comma 300 in order to find c we're going to plug in 0 for our t we're going to plug in 300 for our n as you can see when this occurs k times 0 is going to be 0 and e to the negative 0 is the same thing as e to 0 which is just 1 so we end up just getting c here so now we can solve for c by subtracting 650 on both sides dividing both sides by negative 1 we get c is equal to 350 awesome we can take that and plug it in our general solution down here now we can solve for k by using our other initial condition so all you have to do is take 2 plug that in for t take 500 plug that in for n now we need to solve for k so negative k times 2 is going to be negative 2k we take this 650 subtract that to the other side we then divide both sides by negative 350 we get 3 7 is equal to e to the negative 2k so how do we get k by itself we need to get rid of this e so we're going to take the ln the natural log of both sides the ln of e these two things cancel each other out just leaving us with negative 2k we then get k all by itself by dividing both sides by negative 2 we get k is approximately equal to 0 0.4236 we can take that plug that into our general solution up here and we now have our particular solution to this differential equation with these initial conditions
Now we can finally go about answering this question. We want to find the population when t is equal to 3. So we're going to take 3, plug that in for t here, and when we simplify this, we end up getting that n of 3, the number of coyotes after 3 years, is approximately equal to 552 coyotes. And we can confirm that with our graph here. We see that our particular solution is in fact correct, and these two data points would be our given initial conditions, whereas this data point right here is what we just found. Perfect. What do you get when you combine a bomb and a dinosaur? Dynamite. Okay, this time it says during a chemical reaction, substance A is converted into substance B in a rate that is proportional to the square of the amount of A. When T is equal to zero, 60 grams of A are present, and after one hour, T equals one, only 10 grams of A remain unconverted. How much of A is present after two hours? So this time we're dealing with a chemical reaction that turns a substance into another substance, but the setup is going to remain the same. We're going to create a differential equation because it says the rate, which is your derivative, is proportional to, so equals K times, and then whatever this expression is over here. So in this question, we are trying to find how much A is present after two hours. So we need to designate a variable based on what we're trying to find. Since we're trying to find how much A is present after two hours, we're going to say that Y is going to be equal to the amount of unconverted substance A at any time T. So now we can use this variable in order to set up our differential equation. Remember, we start with the rate. So the rate at which A is converted into B, that's going to be dy dt, the rate at which Y, unconverted substance A, changes into substance B. So dy dt is proportional to equals K times the square of the amount of A. And we said the amount of A is Y in this case, so we're going to say Y squared. So again, dy dt, that is your rate at which A is changing, equals K times, that means is proportional to, and then Y squared, the square of the amount of A remaining. And then if you notice in the question, we're actually given two initial conditions. We're given at time t equals zero, 60 grams of A are present. So we have that initial condition, zero comma 60. And then after one hour, or time t equals one, we know only 10 grams of A remain unconverted. So we have that second initial condition, one comma 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve this differential equation. We're going to get the general solution. Then we're going to use this initial condition to find our C value. Then we're going to use this initial condition to find our K value. First step in solving a differential equation is to separate the variables. It's the most important step. If you don't do this step, you can't get any points on the AP test. So we need to make sure we get all the Y's to one side, all the T's to the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this differential equation, multiply both sides by DT. Over here, these DT's cancel out, and we have all the T's on the right side of the equation. But we need to make sure we get all the Y's to the other side. So we divide both sides by Y squared, or multiply both sides by 1 over Y squared. Over here, the Y squares cancel each other out, and we now have all the Y's on the left side, all the T's on the other side. And you think, what about this K? Well, remember, K is just a constant. It's a number. So it can go on either side, but we typically leave it wherever dt or dx is. So now we have separated the variables. We can move on to the next step, which is to prepare both sides for integration. So we're going to integrate both sides. There's two things we have to prepare for integration over here. This one over y squared, we're going to rewrite as y to the negative second power. Over here, this constant k, we can move out front of the integral sign. Now we are ready to integrate. So we're going to integrate both sides. Here, when we integrate y to the negative second power, remember you have to use the general power rule. So it's just going to be y to the negative 2 plus 1 over negative of 2 plus 1 plus c. On this side, you integrate dt, and you get t plus c. Distribute the k to the t and to the c. You get k times t plus c times k, a constant times a constant, is still just a constant. And then remember, if you subtract the constant that's over here with the constant that's over here, a constant minus a constant is still just a constant. So you leave that c over here. We then simplify, and we bring this y to the negative first to the denominator, and we end up getting negative 1 over y is equal to k times t plus c. Now, we need to solve for y. So we got to get it out of the denominator. So there's two ways you can do this. You could either multiply both sides of the equation by y and divide both sides by k times t plus c, that quantity. Or you could just take the reciprocal of both sides and then multiply both sides by negative one. And we get y is equal to negative one over k times t plus c, that quantity. Now we have our general solution to this differential equation. But remember, we were given two initial conditions, one so we could solve for c and one so we could solve for k. So let's first use this initial condition right here, 0, 0, 60, where we plug in 0 for t and 60 for y. So we 
can solve for our C value. So what is zero times K? That's just zero. And then zero plus C is going to be C. So we have negative one over C is equal to 60. If I multiply both sides by negative one and then take the reciprocal of both sides, I end up getting that C is equal to negative one over 60. So I can take negative one over 60 and plug it in my general solution for C. Now, almost done. I need to take this second initial condition, one comma 10, plug in one for T, 10 for Y. So I can solve for my K value now. So K times one is just going to be K. Take the reciprocal of both sides of the equation, add one over 60 to both sides, and I get that K is equal to negative one over 12 when I simplify those fractions. So now all I have to do is take that one over 12, plug it in for K up here, and I have my particular solution to this differential equation up here. So now I would let you leave your answer like this and call it a day, and I'd give you full credit on test. But on an AP test, it may require that you simplify it because it's a multiple choice test. And if you don't see this there, you need to know how to simplify this. Well, since there's a negative out front and both terms in the denominator have a negative, you can actually factor out a negative from the denominator, which then cancels out with this negative and makes everything positive. Mathematicians also don't like the fact that we have fractions within fractions. So you can multiply the numerator and denominator here by the least common denominator between these fractions here, which would be 60. So if I multiply the numerator and denominator by 60, the numerator is just going to be 1 times 60, which is 60. If I multiply 60 in the denominator and distribute that, 1 over 60 times 60 becomes 1. And then 1 over 12 times 60 becomes 5. So we get 60 over 5t plus 1. That's how this simplifies to that. Now, believe it or not, we still have not answered the question. The question was how much A is present after two hours. So we have to take that particular solution that we just found and plug in two for T. And when we do, we end up getting 60 over 10 plus one or 60 over 11, which is approximately 5.45 grams. So we can say that during this chemical reaction, after two hours, there's only about 5.45 grams of substance A remaining. And you can confirm this with your graph. You see that the equation of this curve right here matches our particular solution. And these two initial conditions are the points that we were given. And this point right here is the one that we just found, 2 comma 5.45.